Hey guys, so I'm in need of a longer BMS communications cable between my uh, EG4 6500EX and the Life Power 4 batteries. It does come with one, it seems to work generally pretty well, but I just need one that's longer. So today, we're gonna try to create one, or one of our own, all right? Just using standard CAT6 cable, you could do it with CAT5E if you wanted to, but I don't even know if this is gonna work, so let's go ahead and get to it. All right, in order to try to get this done today, let's talk about some of the tools we're gonna to use. You're obviously gonna need some cable. This right here is CAT6 cable. Uh, you could probably get done with CAT5e. I probably actually recommend CAT5e because it's easier to work with, but you know, this is CAT6. And if you're using CAT6, I would highly recommend uh, terminals or crimps or whatever you wanna call them, terminators. Um, if you're using CAT6, I would re highly recommend the pass-through ones. I mean, you're gonna need the terminals regardless, right? But CAT6, use pass-through because it's so much easier to work with. You'll see what I mean later. What I mean by pass-through is right here, the, the terminal is open so that the wires will pass through. If you get adjusted that angle, you can see, and then you can crimp them and cut them off. If you are using pass-through, you need to use the pass-through crimpers or else your life is just gonna suck. Trust me, you need the pass-through crimpers for pass-through terminals. Um, you don't wanna use the non-pass-through crimpers because it, you, it can, you can get it done. It's just gonna suck. Uh, obviously, boots. I like to go ahead and just get the boot on here quickly, mainly because, you know, I don't know how many times I've created cables and, you know, the boots were missing. Uh, I have two different colors, you know, you can use whatever you want, but I like to just delineate which side goes to the inverter versus which side goes to the battery. This right here is a Klein Tools uh, crimper, cutter, stripper, all in one. I would highly recommend this one. And no, this video is not sponsored. Nobody sent this to us. We did buy this. Uh, just with all the stuff that we've been using, I realized this one, uh, and there's another one from Ideo, I think that works pretty well, but I'd I really like this Klein Tools one because it works you know, pretty well. Um, obviously some diagonal cutters and then some linesman pliers. You really don't need this one. I just kind of have it laying around just in case, but you know, let's go ahead and get this started, all right? So if you need this tool of, or if you need the link or description of any of these tools, just check in the description, it'll be there, all right? So take your strippers, uh, put the wire through there, cut off as much as you need, or if you're using past, you could cut off more, mainly because you're just all gonna cut them off. You could take that out, right? We're gonna throw that out. We're gonna take this uh, rope here. We're gonna take our pliers, cut that out. Then we're going to separate our orange and uh, blue ones here. And then I'm going to take this, uh, all the other ones, right? And then cut those off, right? So now we're left with the wire, orange and blue. Go ahead and uh, untwist these. Um, usually it's a lot easier than this, but standing at a weird angle makes this a little bit challenging. So I like to get to the bottom, then just give it one extra twist, mainly because that's actually gonna pass through and you're gonna crimp it down there. It makes it a little bit easier to get the job done, all right? So now we have these. Uh, I checked the cable and what, from what I could tell, it just only uses two wires and it uses orange and blue, so we're gonna stick with that. Uh, so we're gonna cut this blue stripe off and this orange stripe off. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that and that. So now we're left with this. Uh, so what I like to do at this point is just take something like a screwdriver or pliers or something like that, pull the two wires tight against this edge because that helps really straighten them out, right? So as you can see there, it's been straightened out, okay? Uh, if you really wanna cut this and you know make this cleaner, I would highly recommend that because it will make the whole job easier. But uh, if you can't, then you know just suffer through it, I guess. Uh, once I do that, I'll take these uh, linesman pliers and just like flatten it out because that will really help it pass through uh, the terminals or where you're gonna crimp it on. So after you hold these tight, cut a nice straight edge. I like to cut mine just at a little bit of an angle like so because it makes passing through happen at different times and that makes it a lot easier, okay? And what I did there was take a step ahead of myself and I did not put blue and orange first. So we're gonna use the blue and orange wires like so, just like that. And then uh, we're going to pass it in through here. And we're gonna be using pins one and two for the battery side. And I'm using pins one and two from the bottom, okay? So left pins one and two, blue is number one and orange is number two, okay? So as you see here, you see the pin or the wires just popping out. Push it in as much as you can to the, uh, the insulation or the outer edge goes inside of the terminal so that when you crimp it, you're getting the uh, spline and the uh, cover inside of the crimp because that helps provide the strain relief, okay? As you can see here, if you look from the bottom here, you see, one and two pins, um, blue and orange, 
are coming out. We're going to take this crimper, right, slicer, and we're going to put it in through here just like so. And as you see right here, make sure you push it tight against it and then you crimp it. Check this out. The wires have been cut off and now you have this crimp on pins one and two, um, blue and orange, just like that. Okay. So we're going to repeat that process again after I put this boot on here. So this white side is for the battery. We're going to try to go ahead and create one for the inverter. Pretty much repeat the same steps, but uh, just pin the wires just a little bit differently. Okay. So we're going to try this here, strip this uh, outer jacket off. Take this out. We're going to separate the uh, blue and orange here. After I cut this little rope out of here. We're gonna take uh, or man, I'm trying to do it at a weird angle. It's really getting to me. So take these. Um, take your cutters. Cut these out. I'm gonna try to cut these as close to here as possible. Look at that. Just like that. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to untwist our orange and blue wires. So go like that, untwist it. And when you get to the bottom right here, untwist it, just give it one more extra untwist because that really helps. If you're doing this in like a data center or high, you know, talking uh, high density wire places, don't do that because that's going to help, you know, introduce crosstalk and stuff like that. So. But here we're not in that environment, so don't worry about it. I would not do this exactly the same way if I was working inside like a data center or anything like that. Okay. So now we got this. We're going to remember we're using blue and orange. So we're going to pull those back and we're going to cut off the uh, blue and orange stripes as much as possible. So here we go. Take this out here, pull tight, cut these out. Don't cut the blue and orange wires. All right. So. Blue and orange um, from the bottom, we're going to be going blue first and then orange. So make sure it's like that and then pull the wires tight against a flat edge, which helps straighten them out. You see that uh, this one could probably afford to go again because I didn't do that very well. There you go. Blue and orange. And then I'm going to come across and cut them at a angle just like that. And then for the inverter side, we're going to be going pins uh, three for blue and five for orange. Okay. So this is the part where you're going to have to pay close attention to because you want to get pins one, two, three for blue and then orange. You want to skip pin number four. So uh, that's failing miserably right there. There we go. So uh, you can always double check it right here before you pass it through as you can see, or maybe you can't see because we can't focus here. The blue is on pin three and then the orange one is on pin five. Okay. And that's why I highly recommend using the pass through mainly because it makes this part so much easier. And I forgot to uh, just push this down with the linesman pliers, which will help this part right here. I'm sure passing through all five cables, you know, makes it easy, but I don't know what the other cables are used for on this EG4 system. So I'm not going to do that or all the, the other wires and pins. Okay. So just do one final check before you do the crimp. Look here three and five, uh, blue and orange. All right. And as I was telling you earlier, I forgot about this. Uh, do I want to go ahead and pull that out and put this in and uh, let's go with the yes. Cause I don't want to repeat this. All right. So we'll be right back. And with the magic of editing, we are back. So all I did was just take it off, put the boot on and come back. As you can see here, the blue and orange is still on pin three and five. All right. So we're going to take our crimper. We're going to take this, drop it in here like so. Make sure, like I said, the bulk of the meat of the cable is past this uh, strain relief point. Put it in through here. As you can see here, let's crimp this down. There you go. You can pull it out. You can always do a tug test, right? But look at it. So we got a pin three and five, three on blue and then orange on five. So that's what it looks like. Pass through connectors are awesome. Okay. So let's go over, take this over to our inverter and battery and see if the communication actually works. All right. All right. And here we are at the system. Okay. So just to show you uh, that this system does actually work, this is what the uh, original uh, battery cable came with or the BMS communications cable. I believe if you go in here, you can look at setting, I think it was five or something like that, which tells you the battery. So battery communication, we're using EG4 protocol. This communication cable does work. Okay. Just to show you that it is what's actually working is take and unplug it and it should throw an error. Look at that fault. 
error code 61, okay? Here's our cable. If I remember correctly, we said the black side goes to the inverter. So we're gonna go ahead and plug this into the uh, BMS communications port. Uh, maybe not BMS, but the communications port. And then we're gonna take this white side and plug it into our battery bank here below. All right, here we go. And just like that, the fault has gone away and the cable does work, okay? Uh, let's see how much sunlight we're actually getting here on PV1. I only got one PV connected. We're getting 643 watts of solar in. So if you want to create the cable, it does work, all right? All right, look at that. It worked, all right? So I'm really glad that it worked because I wasn't sure if it was going to work or not. I didn't test it or create it ahead of time. We just, you know, tried it for the first time. So I'm glad that it worked. Hope this video helped you guys. I know there's been a lot of, you know, uh, forum posts and stuff like that. So I tried to figure out which pins go to what, and I couldn't find a really clear answer directly. So I just looked at it and then let's see, we could just create one, all right? So that's how you do it. Hope this video has helped you out just in case you wanted, you know, uh, to make your own or you lost it or it got pulled out or broken or you just need it longer. That's how you would do it, okay? So if you, like I said, if you need a link or something like that to any of the tools that we use in this video, check the description below and it should be there. Otherwise, hope this video helped you guys out. Have a great day and then we'll see you guys next time.